Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at you guys today at Take Aim Training and Range and what another beautiful hot day we've got here. And guys, you probably saw our how to use an AR-15 video and I asked you guys there if maybe you guys like these crash courses or these refreshers or if you're new to the firearms industry, firearms world, firearm owner, whatever it might be. First off, welcome. And secondly, I was asking you guys do you enjoy these types of things? And maybe a good refresher wouldn't be bad. And a lot of you guys say, yeah, sure, man, keep them coming. All right, cool, I'll listen to you guys, okay? So today's little uh, crash course, if you will, or a period of instruction is gonna be simply on pistols, how to shoot pistols, how to use them, what are they, things along those lines. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So I've got an assortment of pistols lined up here. And uh, before we start talking about these guys, what I have holstered, whatever else it might be, let's go over those basic basic firearm safety rules, okay? We've got four of them. There's a fifth one that I like, and we'll talk about that one here in a moment. But if you guys saw our A or 15 video or how to use it, I go into a little bit of a little bit more in depth covering each scenario as far as safety goes for those four safety rules. So for today, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit on them, making sure you guys all know them. First one is, Treat every firearm as if it is loaded. You never know what you're picking up. Just go ahead and always visually inspect, clear those firearms, treat it as if it's loaded, okay? Second, never point at anything you don't intend to destroy or shoot. Third, keep your finger off the trigger until ready to fire. Fourth, know your target and what lies behind it, all right? And then the fifth little safety rule that I like is to know your firearm and be proficient with it. After you go out and make your first purchase of a pistol, rifle, whatever it might be, shotgun, doesn't matter. If you don't know what the heck you're doing with it, you're gonna be more of a liability than an asset and you're not gonna be able to defend yourself with it efficiently. Let's just put it that way, okay? So seek the proper training. Maybe don't spend all of your money on a firearm. Spend a little bit on the gun, a little bit on ammo, and a little bit more on training, all right? But ultimately, treat every gun as if they're loaded, number one. Number two, don't point at anything you don't intend to shoot. Number three, keep your finger off the trigger. Four, know your target and what's behind it, all right? Those are your four basic firearm safety rules. Cool, now let's roll into this little uh, instructional period here. What are pistols? Pistols are pretty much labeled by the ATF as a firearm that can be picked up and fired with one hand essentially. All right, let's just keep it at that. Small, compact guys like you see like this. Now granted, there are different types of variations of pistols. You have AK pistols, AR pistols, CZ Scorpions, which are labeled technically as pistols. You have some CZ Scorpions that are rifles. I know that's a lot of information to be throwing at you guys, but there's a lot of different definitions and variations for pistol. But what we're talking about today are pretty much your standard, typical pistol, your handgun, right? This is, this is it right here a grip, a barrel, a slide, a frame, a trigger, and some sights. That's it today, all right, guys? So that's what we're talking about. Now, what types of pistols are there? We've got hammer-fired and striker-fired, which are pretty much the two most common that there are. Hammer-fired simply uh, has a hammer, like you'll see on this FNX 45 Tactical here. That right there is the hammer, all right? You'll notice when I pull the trigger on this guy, and again, we are clear, and I'm pointing it in a safe direction here, Whenever I pull the trigger, you're gonna notice the hammer fall. Awesome, now what's that doing? That's striking the firing pin, which then the firing pin is hitting that primer on the casing of the bullet, causing that small explosion taking place and then sending the projectile down round, down range, excuse me. Awesome. Striker fired pretty much has the same type of thing happening minus the hammer. You have an internal striker here and all of that's taking place within the slide through a system of springs and things like that, all right? And you'll notice there's nothing falling, nothing happening that you see right back here when I pull the trigger on this guy. But you can hear that audible click, you can hear the striker being sent, and if there was a, a, a bullet in here or a casing, you'll notice that the striker fire would hit that primer, which would then again cause that small explosion, sending the projectile out the barrel. Easy enough, cool. All right, and what other types of variations of pistol are there? Well, you've got pistols that take double stack magazines and also single stack magazine. What's the difference? Double stack has more of a staggering that's taking place. You'll know with my FNX 45 tactical here, uh, this magazine has 15 rounds that it will hold, and this is a 45 ACP. And you'll notice just how much thicker this magazine is, which 
tends to offer a thicker grip on the gun itself. And then you'll notice with like my 1911 here, this is a single stack mag. This is gonna have, this one in particular has an eight round capacity on it. It's much skinnier, much slimmer than what a double stack is. So it offers a little bit slimmer grip. Again, a lot of different firearms are different. Some of them are thick with single stack. It just depends on how pretty much they're made. But what are the pros and cons of each? Well, <laughs> you got pros and cons of each. For instance, a single stack mag like this guy right here, naturally it's gonna be lighter, fewer rounds, right? Cool. Now granted, in a 1911, which is an all metal frame pistol, uh, this guy minus the flashlight weighs about the same as this guy but you get double the rounds in this guy almost, 15 being in this one. So your pros are maybe a little bit slimmer grip, maybe a little bit lighter depending on the platform that you're shooting, all right? And your cons are, with this guy, fewer mag capacity. That's really about it. With things like this guy here, you've got maybe a little bit heavier when it's fully loaded, all right? And well, you get a little bit more rounds. So there you go. All right, I can honestly say that it's the, really the choice is yours. Uh, go and get a fill for a double stack versus a single stack, see what's more comfortable to you and uh, what exactly you would prefer, all right? But ultimately, that's really about it. There are some other weird things out there, you know. Uh, you've got revolvers, of course, which don't have magazines, unless you're in that, you know, Simpsons meme. Uh, but there actually was way back when a magazine fed revolver type thing. Look it up, it's weird. But anyway, so there's different types of platforms out there, uh, which we might cover in a separate video, like how to shoot revolvers. But maybe, maybe later, let us know down in the comments, all right? Anyway, so let's go ahead and just kind of get into what all we've got going on here. We've talked about hammer fired, we talked about striker fired, we've talked about double stack versus single stack. Let's get into the fun part of the video and let's go ahead and just start talking about shooting them now. All right guys, so the first gun we're gonna go over with today is the Beretta M9A3, one of my personal favorites. And if you're in the market for just an overall great gun, check these guys out. Now, a couple of features I'm gonna hit on this guy really quick, and we'll cover with different types of platforms or systems. For instance, 1911s have different safeties, different actions than Glocks or even this M9A3 here. Even though it's still a hammered fired pistol, uh, it does have a different location for the safety. And also too, unlike a 1911, which is single action only, this one here is single action, double action. And what does that mean exactly? Well pretty much, again, we're clear. That means that even when the firearm that you see right here, it, as of right now, it's on safe, which completely deactivates the trigger, right? Whenever I flip it on to fire from this position right here, I don't have to pretty much cock it myself to shoot it, right? I can actually fire from this position here. As you can see, that's called your double action. Your single action onlys are pretty much you have to cock it, you have to pull the hammer back, whatever it might be, to actually get it to actuate, all right? And I'll show you guys a little bit more of that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead, actually before I even load this guy up, let's go ahead and just talk about grip, all right? So for shooting a firearm or a pistol in a stable platform, two, typically a two-hand grip is great, and you'll see all sorts of crazy stuff. Let's go ahead and go with the wrong really quick, all right? Uh, gripping of the wrist. Uh, no, just, just don't. Teacupping, also not right. What you really want to do, I'm trying to think if there's any other crazy things that I've seen, you know, with two hands, just, just, this is the don't part, okay? Things like this or whatever else. The correct way of doing it is making sure that you get a really high grip on this guy up here. The higher, the better because what you want is to be pretty much getting this barrel as close to being in line with your arm, okay? That's uh, considered a bore axis in sense. So if you have a pistol, like my FNX has a pretty high bore axis uh, when you look at it, that means the barrel's sitting a little bit higher. Whenever you have a firearm with a higher bore axis like that, you typically have a little bit more recoil because that's more weight coming from, so think about it, when the trigger goes boom, right? When you pull the trigger, this shoots, the slide gets actuated. Now this comes back and causes some recoil, some muzzle flip, right? Well, if you have this sitting a little bit higher, more material, all of this weight and inertia is coming back and causing you to recoil more. You want less of that. 
You'll also notice too that adding any type of lights or lasers towards the front of your firearm like this, if it comes equipped with a rail, you can have this. Some firearms or some manufacturers, uh, different accessories actually make rail mounted or not even rail mounted, but just your firearm specifically mounted lights or lasers. You'll notice by adding that weight up here, that'll actually help reduce recoil just a little bit it's because you have that added weight up front, which is kind of a nice feature. And me personally, I do like having your mounted lights and things like that, especially for a home defense gun, but we'll talk more about that later. Anyway, so when it comes to a grip on this guy, I like getting your strong hand, whether it be left-handed or right-handed, your strong hand uh, will determine, or pretty much what hand you are, it typically depends on uh, you know what is your strong hand. Me, I'm a right-handed guy, right-handed shooter, my strong hand's my right hand. I like to have a nice high grip on this, pretty much getting my hand up all the way up here into this crevice here and getting as high as I possibly can on this, on this grip. Cool, easy enough. What do I do with my weak hand now? Weak hand, what I typically like to do is pretty much wrap all four of the fingers right in front of the fingers on my strong hand and then keeping my weak hand thumb pretty much forward pointing at wherever I'm shooting. So I have a pretty simple grip just like that. All right. Now, typically I usually try to find some sort of index to rest my thumb on. In this case, it's my takedown lever right up here. I usually like to kind of rest right on that. Now I have a problem with uh, like my Glock. I unfortunately like to ride the slide release. I don't practice with it as much as I should. So that's something I have to mentally take note of every time I start shooting that gun. Thankfully the slide release on this guy is so far forward. I don't really hit it with my strong hand thumb and it's so far back that I don't have to worry about actuating it with my weak hand thumb. Now, what does that mean when I'm shooting? Te technically what's supposed to happen is on your last round that's in your magazine, after you shoot that round, the slide's gonna come back, the follower on your magazine is gonna actuate the slide lock, locking the slide to the rear. Pretty much letting you know your gun's empty. What happens if you are riding the slide release or the slide lock, slide catch, whatever you wanna call it, what happens if you're riding that when you're shooting and that last round goes off, the follower's not gonna be able to do its job and it won't lock the slide to the rear, it's just gonna go and act like it's chambering another round, but what you're gonna hear is this when you pull the trigger, nothing. So make sure you practice and train with your gun, get used to it, all right? But let's go ahead and load and make ready really quick. And you'll notice where the safety is on this guy, by the way, this is a frame or a uh, slide safety when it's up on the slide. You'll notice with a couple other guns I'll show you guys, we have a frame safety, which is more so down here. And then you'll notice with my Glock, we have what's just called a blade safety or a trigger safety, which is simply just a blade that sticks out in front of the trigger. And if you pull from the sides, it won't actuate. I'll show you guys that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and insert that magazine that I took out. Inserting the magazine with the bullets facing forward, of course. There we go. And let's go ahead and load it. So right now we are loaded, but you'll notice my firearm is on safe and the hammer is forward. If I pull the trigger right now, nothing's gonna happen. Right, perfect. Now the moment I flip this guy onto fire, double action is pretty much gonna be in play here, which means when I pull the trigger while it's on fire, the hammer you'll notice will creep back right until we get to the breaking point of the trigger and it's gonna shoot. So let's go ahead and do that one time so you guys can see. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling that trigger. You're gonna see the hammer until it breaks. Perfect, and now what you're gonna hear is a reset when I let go of the trigger. Boom, just like that. All right, easy enough. Now notice when I actuate the safety, the safety on this gun here acts also as a decocker. What does that mean? That means that whenever I actuate the safety all the way down into the decocking position, the hammer will go forward. It will not send a round home because it's pretty much blocking the firing pin from being hit. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Boom. So now what does that mean? Hammer is forward, firearms on safe, nothing's gonna happen when I pull the trigger. Perfect. Now I can carry this guy, I can reholster it just like this, and I feel very comfortable carrying this guy around as I often do, just like that. With one round in the chamber, magazine loaded, on safe, hammer forward. Perfect. Now when I go to draw, I can have this guy out, I can flip it onto fire, and I can pull the trigger again. Easy day. Now you notice right now it's in the single action position. That's with the hammer back, firearm on fire. So let's go ahead and pull the trigger now. You'll notice the hammer won't have to creep back at all. It's already in its pretty much firing position. So let's go ahead and shoot. All right. Now you might notice something a little bit different as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on safe. When shooting it on double action, all of this gets taken up. All of that right there. It's a heavier trigger pull, something along, the, so it's, it's just heavier and you have a longer travel, all right? Whenever it's in its single auto, or um, yeah, single auto stage there, uh, what you'll notice is that the trigger 
has much less travel. See you in the position that it's in right now. And it's a little bit lighter here. All right, so that makes it a little bit easier to get off more accurate shots for that first round. Granted, if you practice with it and you get good with it, having it in double action or just pulling the trigger from all the way up here in that ready position isn't gonna be a problem. But just keep in mind that that first round when going from safe with the hammer forward is gonna be that long drawn pull on a double action firearm. All right, now you'll notice as I'm shooting this guy here, I'm making sure I'm maintaining that high and tight grip on this guy. I'm making sure that I'm getting a firm grip on it. I want to be able to, you know, pretty much feel that recoil just a little bit, but I want my body to be able to take all of it, okay? So as I'm shooting, I'm making sure my arms are pretty much fully extended. Now, personally, I don't like to lock my elbows. That is just something that I truly do not enjoy while shooting, and I don't think that's great. Because what's happening when you do that, you're doing more of a kind of like this, and it's just, it's just not comfortable. If you wanna shoot well, be comfortable in your shooting stance, all right? Um, like I taught in my AR-15, or the uh, AR-15 how-to video, pretty much I'd get kind of like in a fighting stance, how you would be fighting. Me, typically, I like to kind of square up to my target, and that's something that we're taught in the Marines because of body armor. When you think about it, if we're square up to our target, and let's just say we're taking rounds and they impact into our body armor, it's a lot better for facing them instead of to the side where we have weak spots, all right? So this is something that I've just been taught and it actually helps with the recoil a little bit, I think, because what I can do is tighten up all these muscles back here and now I can accurately put off shots and then be able to mitigate and handle that recoil without a problem. I feel very comfortable shooting in this position. I feel like I can get all of my shots right on target, right where I need to be, and I can handle that recoil without any issues. All right, there we go. And that is with the Beretta M9A3. Again, with the slide safety, double action, single action that I was showing you guys. And yeah, cool little gun, hammer fired. Now let's go grab something a little bit different, show that guy off. All right, guys, so a little bit different platform. This is the ever famous Glock 19, probably one of the most popular firearms or handguns in the world, honestly. And reason behind that is, is because it's a comfortable little shooter, super lightweight, shoots really well. All right, that's really all you need to know about it. Uh, striker fired, you'll notice this guy as well has the the uh, trigger safety like I was mentioned, notice that little blade right there. That right there is actually your safety. If you don't have proper finger placement, it won't actuate that trigger, all right? So if I even just push down on the side, you'll notice that it just blocks it from happening and I can push as much force as I want and that's just not gonna go. But the moment that I actually apply correct pressure, you'll notice that the trigger actually comes back. Again, we are clear. I'll go ahead and show you guys this trigger really quick. Boom, just like that, rack it. And then there's that reset. Nice, cool gun, uh, Apex trigger if you guys are interested, makes nice stuff. Now my Glock has had a lot of rounds shot through it and it looks a little bit different than your standard or base Glock. I've put on higher sights, I've obviously got a red dot on here, I've got a threaded barrel to shoot suppressed, I've got slide cuts, all sorts of crazy stuff. My Cerakote job is wearing out on this thing and I've had it for a long time. This, is, this was actually my daily carry for a long time so you'd think I'd actually be pretty decent with shooting it and you know, remembering to keep my hands off that slide release, like I said right there. My grip on this guy, again, I like to be high and tight. And what I need to do, and I have to get in that mental state, is keeping my thumb off of this little guy right here. Because that little guy is that slide release that I was mentioning before. When I shoot, I like to try to get just like this here. I'll ride that slide release, causing the slide not to lock back on that last round on an empty magazine. So I just need to move my thumb over just ever so slightly onto my weak hand thumb knuckle and I'll be fine. But let's go ahead and load this guy up and shoot it and I'll show you guys a little bit of difference. Also too, <laughs> I noticed I was saying something stupid like semi-action, that's, I know. My wife tells me I'm really bad at multitasking. I meant to say single action. This guy is double action only. What does that mean? It means that with this trigger pull, it's gonna be that, that longer take up, even though it doesn't feel bad, it's gonna be that longer take up, a little bit heavier, every single time. There is no single action on this guy. Double action all day, just like that. Without it pretty much cycling and resetting that trigger, there's nothing more I can do here. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and load this guy up really quick. And here it is, one round or one magazine to 15 rounds. Let's load this guy up. And let's just shoot a little bit here. Again, 
taking that mental note to keep my finger or my thumb right off of that uh, slide release. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and get in that shooting stance that I talked about before, kind of squaring off to my target. Gonna go ahead and get that sight picture, keeping my arms nice and straight here, keeping everything nice and tight right towards my back. And let's go ahead and fire off around. Easy day. And what you're hearing too is that reset. When I, when I slowly let go of that trigger, you hear maybe that audible click, that's that trigger resetting. Boom. Just like that. And notice, I kept my thumb off that freaking slide lock, or slide release. <laughs> All right, cool. Slide lock back to the rear, and that's what's supposed to happen whenever you run dry in your magazine. Pretty much letting you know, hey, the gun is empty. I need to go ahead and drop my mag, reload, grab a new mag, and then send this guy home for the next shot. All right, and we'll get into reloads here in just a little bit, but overall, I just want to kind of cover the different basics as far as each gun goes. One thing I want to talk about too are red dots because they take a lot of practice to get used to. When you get so used to picking up your regular sights, you'll start hunting for that red dot and doing this number like, okay, where is it? And depending on how you have it set, if you have it for a lower one third or an exact co-witness will determine pretty much how you shoot in a sense or how you get that sight alignment. But ultimately I like to have mine kind of set up as an exact co-witness. That red dot is more so there just to get those quick shots off, but red dots actually come in handy with night vision trying to line up <laughs> trying to line up sights whenever you're shooting with night vision just simply doesn't work sometimes so anyway if you want to get a red dot i do advise them i think they're a lot of fun and cool but make sure you're proficient with them because they do take some training all right let's go ahead let's grab one more before we start getting into some reloads all right guys so the last gun we're going to talk about today before we start doing some reloads too is my colt 1911 45 i grew up with one of these guys not the tactical model with the rail and all that uh, but i did grow up with one of these and this was pretty much the first pistol i ever shot so i feel very comfortable with one of these guys uh, but 1911s have been around for a very long time and uh, the reason i'm choosing to do the reload with this guy is because well it holds the fewest amount of rounds and you're gonna find yourself reloading more often with this guy. <laughs> but that's okay, this gun's a heck of a lot of fun. And you'll notice all metal construction, just like my Brada M9A3 is, but this one is, cal is chambered in 45 ACP. Fat slow boy that you see right there. All right. So this guy here, let's go ahead and talk about its functionality. You're gonna notice really quick, this one here has a frame safety on it, not a decocker. So right now it's on safe which locks up the trigger mechanism, not gonna shoot. The moment that I drop this guy down, that frees up the trigger. Again, we are clear and allows it to drop. But this guy actually has two forms of safety on it. It's not just the actual safety that you see right here that can only be actuated when the hammer is back like that, but it's also a grip safety. If the grip safety is not depressed, the trigger won't go boom either, all right? Or the trigger won't actuate, you know, proper actual terminology here. So you have to actually have a decent grip on the gun, depressing the grip safety, having the actual frame safety off to be able to pull the trigger, just like that. But let's go ahead and shoot this guy a couple of times here. And then whenever we run dry and that bolt, and that bolt right, as if I'm talking about an AR, and that slide, slide stays locked to the rear, I'll go ahead and show you how I like to perform my reloads, okay? All right, so let's shoot this guy some. Grip is gonna be just the same as all the others. Nice high grip here, getting underneath what's called the beaver tail right back here. Again, trying to get as high as I possibly can, to try to lower where the barrel is sitting, so that way it's a little bit more of a uh, smooth recoil here. Let's go ahead and chamber one. Very good, let's shoot a little bit. Awesome, got that slide lock to the rear, perfect. Now when I'm shooting this guy too, one thing I'm doing is focusing on my sights, more so on my front sight. You wanna make sure that you've got pretty much a blurry rear sight, blurry target, but an in-focus front sight. You wanna be paying attention to that front sight and pretty much your shot placement there. All right, uh, you know, we could maybe throw up a little graphic or something like that, but ultimately look up proper sight picture or sight alignment for a pistol and you'll probably see that on display. Also, where am I pressing on the trigger? It's not so much 
if I try to show this off the best that I can. I'm not doing just the tip of my finger. I'm not getting a whole lot of grab and meat on it right back here. I want it to be pretty much right center of the tip of my finger right up here or the front portion of my finger, you know, whatever I'm trying to say. So my grip, my trigger pull looks something like this right here. Best that I can show you guys. All right. And all my shot placement, this is maybe about 15 yards. So far they've been about center, center left of that group right there. So not bad, especially whenever I'm not trying to focus on that and I'm just trying to remember what to tell you guys here as I'm thinking about all of this that's taking place. But I do love shooting my 45 here. All right, now, when it comes to the 1911 and doing a pretty much a reload, you are gonna have to change your hand position just a little bit because of the natural placement of the magazine release that you see right here. Now there are different magazine releases out there. You have a hill release right back here. You've got magazine releases where you have to push up into the grip. You've got like the European style where you have tabs on right on side of the trigger guard. Today we're just going pretty much for that pretty American style of a magazine release right back here behind the trigger on the frame itself. When I hit that button there, this is how I do it. I'll pretty much just kind of go through. Once it's empty, I'm here dropping the mag. I'm going for my next mag right here, inserting. And me personally, I actually don't like actuating the slide release. I just never have, it's never been my thing. I usually like to get a good grab on the gun itself, rear, rear rack it back like this, and then let it go forward, and then drive and shoot my next round. Just like that. Flip it onto safe so I can come back and talk to you guys, all right? Now, my reasoning behind that it's actually due to my own stupidity, in a sense. Now, I'm not calling that stupid by any means, but I started doing all these practices and reloads with my Glock when I was riding that slide release, and when I was going to do that reload, I didn't have anything to send home because the slide was already there. The slide was already forward, so I'd have to re-rack it. And just in case maybe one day, let's say your magazine follower fails you or your slide release fall, fails you, your slide lock, I should say, and it doesn't keep that slide back, go ahead and start getting that muscle memory of just racking it each time anyway. Boom, just like that. Drop that mag. If I had another one on me, reload. Just like that, right? Easy enough, guys. So there is that guy too. Man, I really love this gun. <laughs> All right, let me pick up my mag here. Let's head back to the bench, kind of go over a couple of different things and then talk about our current giveaway, of course, which is a little bit bigger than these guys. So today we've pretty much discussed all sorts of different types of pistols, uh, different safeties, different firing mechanisms, and let's just go over all of that one more time. First off, your firearm safety rules. Number one, treat every gun as if it's loaded. Coming up to this bench here, I have no idea if these guns are loaded. I know there's been some time, we've had a couple of cuts here. I don't know if maybe Ryan picked one up and played with it, I don't know. So while we're here, let's just go ahead. This one's clear, awesome. This one is safe, great. This one has a magazine inserted. Let's go ahead, empty magazine, keeping that muzzle in a safe direction. Perfect, we are clear on each of these guys and I'll lock this one back. All right, perfect. Now, talking about all these, treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Second, make sure that you maintain your muzzle awareness. You know where you're aiming. You don't wanna ever point at anything you don't intend to harm, all right? Keeping that finger straight off the trigger because again, that is the bang switch. That is what's sending that round down range, okay? And then of course, fourth is knowing your target and what's behind it. Because if you miss, or better yet, if you hit and it penetrates, you need to know what's behind that target because now all of a sudden it's in that bullet's flight path, all right? So be accountable for every round that you shoot. Perfect. And then the last little safety you know, rule that I like is to know your firearm or firearms and be proficient with them, okay? Still need to work with that guy some, all right? So of course the best way to get proficient with your firearms are to go to the range and shoot them. So do that, all right? Now granted, it might be a little bit more difficult to say that than to actually do it. You gotta have time, maybe money, and then on top of that, ammo. <laughs> That's the hard part, right guys? So do what you can. If this is a priority for you, then you'll make all of those a priority as well, okay? So yeah, there we go. Okay, last thing I wanna talk about here, just do a kind of basis coverall. We've talked about striker fired, which is more so in lines with the Glock. We've talked about hammer fired, which is what the rest of these are. We've talked about double action, single action. 
not, not single auto <laughs> or semi-action, whatever I was saying. We've talked about all of these different styles of firearms, things like that. And my best advice to anybody that's new to firearms, maybe you're looking to make your first pistol purchase. First off, get familiar with your state and your state and federal laws, also your local and municipality laws. Some of those differ as well. So make sure that you are within the legal realm of what you are purchasing, okay? Don't want you guys to go out, you know, exercise your Second Amendment right and then all of a sudden find yourself in trouble. That would suck, okay? So make sure you guys know your laws, all right? Uh, also, too, get comfortable with whatever it is that you're looking for. Have an idea of what you want. And also, too, a lot of new shooters say, hey, I just want something small and compact and that's an easy shooter. That typically doesn't work that way. Small guns does not mean small recoil. Typically, it's the reverse or the opposite of that. Smaller guns, if they're shooting let's say a nine millimeter, are gonna have more recoil than you know, a larger full size frame like this is. Or one of the guns here that actually recoils the least is my biggest one on here, my FNX 45. So there you go, keep that in mind. Small guns do not mean small recoil means easy to handle. That's, that's not true, okay? So get out to the range, rent some guns if you can, get familiar with whatever it is that you're in the market for, and shoot that's the biggest thing go out there and pull the trigger on all sorts of different guns and find what's comfortable for you and then get some training all right that's the best thing okay all right i think i'm done talking about pistols today guys i will see you down in the comments if you have any questions feel free to leave them down there i'll be down there and uh, saying hey what's up and you guys can correct me on my stance or whatever else uh, i don't care all my shots are on target i'm happy about it okay <laughs> all right Last gun I wanna talk about today, guys, is our current giveaway. If you're new to Classic Firearms, first off, welcome. Secondly, we give away guns. We give away a whole lot of guns, and we give away guns like this behemoth right here. This is the Zastava M93 Black Arrow Bolt Action Magazine Fed 50 BMG with this Zeiss optic on it, guys. This thing is a beast, and it is sweet, and we slaughtered some hams and turkey with it. So if you guys wanna see us shoot, <laughs> shoot some hams and turkey with a 50 BMG. Make sure you go and visit the video that'll be popping up at the end of this video announcing this guy as our giveaway. All right, guys, and again, you can get your entries here at classicfirearms.com. If you're in the market for any of these firearms as well, we've got them all on our website, so check them all out. M9A3s, Colts, Glocks, FNs, whatever you want, we've got it, and if it's not in stock, make sure you sign up for our product alerts, okay, guys? All right, I'm leaving it off at that. Guys, again, I'm Clint at Classic Firearms. God bless you all, and you can see us at classicfirearms.com.